Hello, I'm Patricia. Welcome to my channel. My channel is about Twin Flame Ascension, which is a series of experiences and symptoms that I help people with. Preventative, wellness, upgrades, integration of your brand new Twin Flame body and opening your chakras, and 5D love. So let's just get into it, shall we? In this video, I want to talk to you about your spirit. And when I say that, just that word alone can connote different kinds of experiences, images. Some people might think of religion, including church. Maybe you had to go to, maybe you were forced. But I'm talking about your drive. Like what, what people call the human spirit is actually the angelic spirit. You have a subtle body, which is your spirit. Yeah, that's true. And it is a vital part of you, and it is a much larger structure. It is a part of why people are going through things and finding so much dissatisfaction with aspects of their life. Now, I want to encourage you here that though sometimes you can feel very confused or even angry at systems, We've all been a part of it. Anger won't help you get where you're going. Anger might help you push off of where you've been. But anger itself really won't help you integrate what you really need to know. Won't help you integrate the spirit and the subtle body, which is much larger than it is. Where everything is um, almost swapping places moving around, and that in and of itself causes a lot of the sensations and symptoms. So what are some of the symptoms of the spirit subtle body? Well, there are several that you may not even think of, and sometimes it even gets attributed to the mind. So if you're thinking of your mind, I refer you to a video I did about the mental body. The mental body is connected to the spirit. It's like saying, your heart and your lungs, yeah, they're right next to each other. They have to interact, but they're two separate things. It's the same with your spirit and your mental, emotional, subtle body. Your spirit can act even when it just bypasses your head. Your spirit can help you feel things that you need to feel. Your spirit can help open doors for you. Your spirit propels you from the inside out towards a direction you want to go, towards things that you love, people you need in your life, connections you need to make. But on the flip side, you have spirit and some of how the spirit has hurt or been harmed. Some of what we call spiritual disease is actually quite prevalent and prominent throughout twin flame people. And what I mean by that is people who've already been activated up until this point. You could look worldwide and there is going to be a heck of a lot more people. But within certain communities, you will see that this is very prominent. Bipolar, bipolar disorders, a lot of disorders. Why? Because there's no balance there and a person has not done their integration. What can they accomplish by doing the integration? Getting off medicine, finding balance, finding a new level where some of that stuff becomes passe for them. You know, it becomes a part of the past. Maybe they had to do it. Some people even bypass that. They don't do it. I work with a lot of people who don't even go that route. They have, go and have to discover they have a disorder and then do this. And then they find me two or three years later when they could have just, you know, jumped right to go. Is that a bad thing? Not necessarily because they do still sometimes need to know certain things. And yeah, we all need to know what our limits are, but also what our potentials are. So what else? Anxiety disorder. Addictions, big time. Reliance and codependencies on substances and even methods for using those substances Patterns around those substances, like always having to go to a pub every Friday after work, you know, that's a pattern. That's a pattern of how a person is relating to it. Is drinking in and of itself bad? Well, I'll say this. 
as you continue on your ascended journey, you're going to find that it's not necessary, but it's actually off the table. It's not something that you should have, nor is it something that you really can be around. How do I know this? Because of my own self and of what people have told me. You feel allergic to it. You feel like it hurts. You feel like it dumbs you down, makes you do stupid things, argues with people. You feel that it's affecting all your relationships. Or you feel like you've stopped the people around you. They're affecting you. And it's really noticeable. Okay? Your body needs a chance to recover from that. That is a part of what I teach so that you can do this. So the other things people can experience, and this happens a lot with men, and you will be seeing it a lot with men. Men on the journey, men around you, men you care about. Crisis of faith, okay? Now, crisis of faith doesn't always mean they don't believe in God or some higher power than them. There's no requirement to have that belief. And some people, you will not persuade them that something like that exists. What that is, is they start losing interest in life. They, they feel aimless. They feel without purpose. It is a crisis. It's a personal crisis that somehow nothing is meaningful. Okay. Now, this is a really tough thing because what that is in the spirit is it is a lack of connection. And that is why I feel it is so critically important to reconnect people to their high, high heart energy. Open their high heart chakra, get connected to your high heart energy because once that happens, that is a one time event, okay? That does not happen with the initial activation. That is something that someone has to work with. And that is stage two, where they have to proactively do some of this stuff, okay? Once that one-time event happens, yeah, you can have a disgruntled day, but you're going to keep bouncing back. It's like you've been filled with air, and, and even if something in life tries to submerge you, you'll keep bouncing up. You cannot fall into that crevice again. Now, even though I'm saying crisis of faith, this can sometimes be interpreted as a midlife crisis where someone starts fishing around for what to do. It can be precipitated by a midlife crisis where someone is feeling dissatisfied in their life. They don't like their marriage. They don't like their spouse. They don't hate their spouse, but there's no spice in their life. There's no passion. Sometimes they fish around for other things to do, such as, should I buy a new car? Should I redecorate the house? Maybe I'll learn to do a project. Maybe I'll take up a hobby and all kinds of other stuff that really does not satisfy the spirit or is only momentarily satisfying. A midlife crisis can precipitate other things too that are not healthy, such as affairs, dangerous activities, um, activities that adrenaline junkies have. And th this might be hard. This might be hard for some people. For example, if they have a job as a surgeon, are they going to go risk themselves to, you know, chop wood and ruin their hands or something? Some people start engaging in high-risk behaviors as a way to simply spark up something. Now, while this in and of itself isn't always bad, Sometimes it still means your heart's not in it. You're just fishing around for something to do to feel something, to feel something different. Another thing of the spirit um, included with addictions is being a rageaholic. You pick fights with everyone. You find someone to fight. You take slight. You have imagined slights over the teeniest, pettiest thing, and you want to turn it into World War III. People do this, but this is particularly a part of the masculine mind, which unfortunately has become very disconnected and needs reconnecting to the heart so that people feel their heart energy through guiding them, stopping them, preventing them from making a fool of themselves or getting hurt or hurting other people. And this has been going on throughout history. The buck stops here. It's time now. What else do people go through with this? 
Well, turning to addictions, and I've seen this happen time and time again in marriages, that when the marriage goes on the wane, one or both of the spouses pick up addictions again. When they're in love with each other, it's not that prominent. The minute the energy in the marriage wanes because it's not being supported from soul level, the sex goes, they lead separate lives, they live in separate bedrooms, and the addictions start up. There's no affection. There's just two strangers living under the same roof, paying the bills together, or maybe not paying the bills, okay? And sometimes women are guided through magazines that are well-intentioned that maybe you do this and that to spark up your man. Okay, if there's not a connection there, pay attention. If you do not know how to tune in, find out, come, join, learn. If you're a man and you're feeling these things that you still want to be responsible, you made a vow to someone, you have a marriage, but you're leading separate lives. You think she doesn't want you. She's in a separate room. You're in one room. You're a man. You need some spice in your life. Believe me, I've heard many, many things. And you decide you're going to be provocative. You're going to make something happen. And you're going to go out and do something. Or you're going to find something on the side. Or you're going to like, you know, funnel some money somewhere for you to use. All kinds of really negative, unhealthy things happen in what should be a wonderful relationship, a marriage, even without having the marriage, okay, where you have some legal rights. These things happen in close-knit long-term relationships. They can happen amongst families. And it simply means someone's checking out in a different way. They're not committing suicide, but they still want something that they want to feel. Why is that? Because your spirit is your spirit. It wants to feel. It's that simple. We need to feel. We need affection. We need laughing. We need play. But it has to be the right way. So in order to let you know this, um, moving your life force out of an entire dimension is going to take something. It will get brutal for you without the proper guidance. Your ascension is critical. It's already happened. You can have four years of a pandemic. You can have four years of ascension and feel good. So this is a little bit about what I am here to guide people with. We get much more in depth. Please check the links below for your, um, if you would like a one-on-one -on -one session or to join my class, check my website where I have books on the subject and webinars. Thank you so much. I don't want to leave on a bad note. Our spirits are what drive things here. Our spirits is how we move mountains. So don't forget that part of yourself and please join. Thanks so much. Bye now.